Or how are you able? Hi, Kristen. How are you able to get in on um, a quest? So cool. I, I have my quest, but I couldn't find like a code <laughs> or anything to put in. Um, so really Kimberly was <laughs> super helpful with me to me. I just did exactly that, right? So first thing I did was, was I found uh, Spatial on Quest, right? And I, mm -hmm. I set up my account on my computer. Then I went and found myself in, um, well, I downloaded Spatial to Quest. And then okay. it's going to ask you, once you go through the process, it's going to ask you to pair it. So pair your account that you created to your quest to your, you know, to the headset, right? And that's going to uh -huh. be the first thing. And it'll, it'll set up your account. Then once you do that, on the right-hand side of, of the screen on your computer, there's going to be a function inside of this room to pair to the room. So what you do is you log, you go into Quest, you log out of uh, the account in Quest. When you log back in, you'll be given a new code, and then you put that inside of the uh, space on the computer, and then you leave the computer, or you'll have two different profiles <laughs> at the same time. It's weird, okay. but um, again, I'm saying this like I really know. Kimberly was super... <laughs> Awesome and dope That's, would help me. I got I got to figure it out last time. And the good thing is if I don't if you guys keep the same link each time, then you only mm -hmm. have to do that one time and after that you'll mm -hmm. see it under your spaces. And that's super okay. handy because this time I just popped right in and on my headset and I didn't have to use my oh, computer. Great. Okay, well then so I have, have to play you already, for a little bit. Are you Let's already logged can... into the, the desktop version? Is is that where you are right yes. now? Yes. Yeah. And I have my account and everything all set up because I wanted to be ready for tonight. So let me see if I can get it to get on my headset. Otherwise, I'm joining on my computer. <laughs> have you downloaded yeah. the uh, um, uh, the app onto your headset? Yes. I have everything set, I thought. <laughs> it just hasn't paired. So maybe you do need, maybe you're at the step that Supreme was talking about where you have to l log out of the headset or log out of spatial on your headset and log back in, and maybe it will ask you to pair. Yeah, that's exactly what it's going to do. you got to make sure you log out, and in the center of the screen, you'll see your avatar, and then when you log back in, it'll immediately, right in that same screen, right in front of you, will give you a new pair code. And that is the pair code okay. that you put into the desktop. And once you get that, you're there. So I also noticed that if you go through, I think it's Zoom or whatever. I mean, not Zoom, but if you go through the... your camera, we can see inside yep. your room. And yep. You pulled up like if I turn mine on, you can see me sitting here as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty interesting. It looks like Angela's also trying to pair her headset right yeah. tonight. Yeah, wow. that's, a, that's okay. That's a we'll give more like time. A second ago. <laughs> yeah. Yep, we'll give plenty completely of time. Completely insane. But this is it's all Nicole. good though. I'm just so weirded out by half the body yeah, thing. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. I'm probably just gonna hang out like, for Can I get a full minutes. body? <laughs> Apparently they they don't do that because it looks weird uh, to try and try get legs to work correctly in virtual spaces. <laughs> That's why most people don't design for them. All I'm saying is all I, you know, if you're recording I just want some legs. <laughs> I put on spatial audio fall off. Is this weird? I put it back on a... It's hard to my, hear uh, people I'm over gonna run there. Out of it is. I barely heard Chris. Yeah. Is over. Can you do the robot dance?
<laughs> Does the audio fall off mean that people can't hear you if they're far away? Right. Oh, yeah. Just, just yeah. trying some things. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's like a master thing that all of us couldn't hear from far away for a little bit. And now we can. No, yeah. Totally my fault. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, interesting. When I think, hey guys, we, you, you know, me? during networking, if we yes, just want to do Angela. it. Yes, we can, Angela. Yeah. But uh, I, used, I haven't used spatial in a while, and they've definitely changed a lot of stuff. How do I get in there with my headset? Hey, Susan, have some um, cake. I, oh, thank you. I paired, I paired, <laughs> I paired my headset, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I went into spaces, and I'm searching how to, because I have my headset. And I, yeah, I don't know how to get in with you guys as an avatar. Um, get into that space. It's I'm doing yeah. this for my. Like, is so there a... when you're in your headset, you because it's already been paired once, maybe before you yeah, set it up with this cool. space, you need to in your headset. You log out of spatial. You, you actually log out, and then when you turn your headset Thank back, you. when you reboot your headset or come back in you should see a pairing number because now it's not paired with anything and that pairing write that pairing number down and then that's what you're going to use to enter in the computer well that i i did i did that part and i i logged out and logged back in so it's not you said that i probably lost pair again um and did you check and see if you click on spaces see uh -huh. if it's oh, yeah. there. that's where it was for me that's, it's you don't not, see it. Sorry, I'm instead of explore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was me last week. Um, have you? Did you get a pairing number when you logged out of of your headset? I I did. Oh, let me do it again. Yeah, try it All again. Right. Now it says I have tracking lost. I see. Oh. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. So you did get in, Susan? Now you you you. I did. Yay! Very exciting. Okay. You can always tell who's on their headset because our hands end up. I know. Okay, hold on, Lindsay. I got you. I got you. Boom. Here we go. She's got the Boom. emote. You must be on desktop, Lindsay. Oh, she you're on mute. All the, she can do all the cool dance moves. It's weird how your arm, your arms aren't like there when I look at my own arm, but I see everyone's arms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My arms are doing something crazy. I So I did get connected. Here's that dance party. <laughs> on headset. So there's, there's two of me over here, actually, which is also kind of trippy. Do you guys well, see two of me? I'm going to let Angela give her a couple more minutes to try to get situated. But I think in a couple minutes we'll... Maybe go ahead and get started. Okay. Yeah, don't mind me. <laughs> super hot. Tonight. So while everyone's Crashing getting started, going to grab one. Where it. is? And this might be something that we're going to talk about. But where is everyone at in their instructional design careers? That's a great icebreaker question. 20 years. I own a company. And, uh... Can you raise your hand when you're talking? Because I have no idea who's talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of training for, um, uh, government, like FEMA, that kind of stuff, FBI, CIA. Nice. But I keep so it on the low. you could tell us about it, but you'd have to kill us? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of, sort of, because I have secret <laughs> clearance. Yes, that would be pretty much, yeah, for the most part. That's why I don't really advertise anything. It's mostly my clients come from referral. 
but it started off with doing work for FEMA. Nice. And I'm always looking to have freelancers work with me. Yeah, I oh, am maybe. a transitioning teacher. I was taught for 11 years and have been um, spending the school year upskilling. And that's Susan and talking? Yes, it's Susan. Okay, me. I can see so, you. Hi, Susan. Oh. <laughs> um, I haven't actually started yet, but I'm working my way into it. I actually know Angela from Universe. Um, we're learning mm. the... Um, 3D or the VR and all of that fun stuff together. Very oh, cool. cool. How are you liking that course? I like it a lot. Um, I think the first one they used a lot from the Unity Learn area. The, the second class that we're in right now um, is a lot of their own stuff that they've made and I like it a lot better. Mm, that's good to know. So, it's been really fun. Um, this one's all about making VR worlds, so it's been really cool. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Awesome. But you can always reach out to me as a resource. I'm here to awesome. Thank share you. what I know. There's no point in learning anything if you can't share it with your friends, new friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We have about, do we want, to, we're such a small group, we can continue, I think, with our introduc self-introductions before we move into the speakers. That's, I think we can be fairly uh, democratic in the <laughs> decision-making process oh, tonight. Someone's giving me some cake. I'll go <laughs> next. Uh, my okay, name is Kimberly, Kimberly Go. Yeah, my name's Kimberly Go, and um, I am a freelance um, interactive video designer. So I started my freelance career in regular instructional design and e-learning, and then I transitioned to interactive video. So I do things like that. I don't know if you've seen that action mapping interactive video. I just put, put that out there recently um, based on Kathy Moore's book. I'm really into action mapping. That's like one of the things I really enjoy, and um, I use Vion for a lot of my animation and stuff. And so that's... That's, I'm putting a course together, actually. That's what my next big project is, is putting out something about how to do branching scenarios. So that'll be, like, hopefully coming out in a couple of weeks, so maybe a month or so. So, yeah, so that's brand new for me, you know, using the Thinkific platform and, and you know, learning how to put a course together and all that sort of stuff. But it's pretty exciting. Mm, and then cool. I, was so, I was so glad to be able to, like, find this group because, you know, when you're a freelancer, it's, like, really lonely. You're, you're never really yeah. able to get together with people who are all scattered all over the place. And it's like, now I'm in here with you guys every month. That's really neat. So I'm happy to be Yay. here. Yay. <laughs> super dope, super dope, super dope. That action that mapping happens, interactive oh, that video is great, like that. by the way. Yes. Kimberly, that, that action mapping oh, interactive video was fantastic. If you guys saw it, um, give it a try. Give it a play. It, it's it's really fun. It's really engaging. I enjoyed yeah, it's it. All, I've got it posted on my LinkedIn profile. So if you connect with me, you'll see it. Really quickly, oh, yes. I don't know if I um, am not remembering it in the, um, the group that we have. Oh, I am totally blanking on the name. Um, but do we have a section for LinkedIn profile links? That uh, is a great idea. We don't. We yeah, we should. can definitely add a channel for that. Because I would love to connect with all of you and see what you're doing. There, There is an introductions for, channel. For sure. Thank um, you. And I think, you know, uh, encouraging people to put up their LinkedIn profile would be awesome. That would be awesome. Do it. Awesome possum. Do it now. <laughs> Tristia, do you want to go next? Maybe oh. we can just move in counterclockwise order. Sure. Um, hi, I'm Tristia Hennessy. Um, I am one of the co-founders of the community group, and um, I've been doing instructional design for about seven-ish years, and I uh, was in administration before that and retail before that. And um, yeah, uh, I'm a giant nerd. I read and watch a lot of sci-fi and 
um, and kind of absorb all, all of those things and, and games and virtual reality and stuff. So um, I, I guess like many of you, I'm, I'm learning as much as I can um, whenever I can uh, to kind of move the focus of my career into building virtual reality training. So, and that's been the mission for like a couple of years now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm really glad that we're all getting together like this. I think it's, it's amazing. I, I'm, I, I love that the community is so active and that everybody is is just really passionate about it and and there is so much of that energy and passion in in our l d community and um i thrive on that so so thank you all for being here awesome Yay. we can pass the talking cake is that what <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pass, the talking talking cake. pass it around talking cake. <laughs> i gotta get my mom 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 I'm, if you are here with us. Oh yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hi everyone. Hello. I'm just Hi. Trying. How are you guys doing? I just joined. I was cooking dinner. <laughs> I'm just running. <laughs> I'm super excited to be here. Um, so yeah, my name, my name is Montserrat, but I go by Mon or Monse. And I have a, um, a headset, but it was in charge. So I was super excited to oh. play with you guys, but I couldn't also. So um, I'm an instructional designer too. I've been doing it freelancing kind of part-time for two years and now fully committed to be a freelancer. And um, I really want to do get into the development of virtual reality. So that's what I'm, I'm here to learn from others and see, understand what is the pathway. You know, there is so much information. I do have experience with AR. I created some projects and now I just want to keep learning. So thank you for having this space. Glad you're here. Can you pass the talking cake? Oh, I have to pass. Okay. Uh, I don't sure. know. Who... Well, I'm Angela, sure. are you are you comfortable Angela. or do you want to wait? <laughs> I, I, I can talk now. I'm, I'm, I'm just playing around to see if I can still hop in there. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I'm Angela Anderson. Um, I've, I, I call myself a recovering software engineer. That's how I got started um, many, many moons ago. And then about a decade ago, I got into university education and I've worked different, different roles, but I've always been so inspired by remote learning. And, um, I've, oh, and, I, and in university education, it's always felt like um, the, the green eggs and ham book. Hey, try this and try that, you know. Um, but then, and then when the pandemic hit, I was actually shifted to a very progressive university. It's, it's called Western Governors University based out of Utah. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, but it's, it, so I watched all my colleagues then and within a week have to turn all of, you know, train all of the faculty at the universities we worked at do all the things that we tried to get them to do for many years <laughs> so um but at that university at western governors where i'm really focused on is it's been awesome um working and they call it program mentor role but it's really a learning strategist role so i onboard students into our programs that are self completely self-directed and competency based and my goal is to teach them how to be such self-directed learners and I also have a background, you know, in data management, data analytics, and then, you know, so I, I bring that to the table for them. But what I'm doing now is I'm trying to get everybody on board to get into VR. Um, and I'm in a that Tri Universe class with Susan, which has been amazing um, from a from a just from a learning designer standpoint um, to be able to experience how people are learning in a in a um, sociable setting. Um, inside and we do that in all space um, so I'm like I'm just looking and watching like how everybody's interacting and it's amazing because we're not getting that in our our online programs um, that social ability so um, the more I can learn and 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 learn from other professionals that are infusing real learning design into it is kind of where I'm, I'm excited to join with this group so 
That's me. <laughs> Very cool. Angela, have you Very done awesome. any of the Thank universe you, classes on computer? Or have they all been on your headset? Well, it's it's like a combination. Um, but all the class I've done. Like, as, but I mean, like, ha have you attended on your computer? The the this is Susan, the ones that um, are in, you know, or in alt space. Have you done any of those on your computer instead of in your headset? A couple of them I have, and it was because I was traveling and I, I had to mm -hmm. do it that way. Uh -huh. So it was interesting it just... to see. I mean, oh. Nicholas is just amazing <laughs> to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nicholas it just is shocked me that. to death how much um, more engaged I am in VR. You don't think about it, but how much mm -hmm. more engaging it is. I just wanted to. And, and just, do you look around at everybody and like, like you realize that they're they're looking at you know I'm looking at them you know like yes yesterday's mm -hmm. the Sunday's class was fun was kind of interesting because one of the things that we they call it spawning you enter the classroom and you immediately want to be able to move because somebody else may get spawned in that same place you know coming in and this, these two classmates and God I I I felt so bad for them but we all understood what was going on they were. They, they were trying to, to answer a question in the class and they were on top of each other. So it was, hmm. it was, it's kind of wild, like, to see all the, all this idiosyncrasies that kind of happen. Um, and, you know, we accept it, but, you know, you could be sta sitting on top of somebody or, you know, the boundaries aren't always there. So it's, you know, that, that's kind of cool. But did you, did you do it from the computer as well? I've done a did couple you? from the computer and it's it amazes me how much more engaging it is from the headset instead even in the alt space app on your computer it's completely different the level of engagement that i had mm -hmm. well, even like the pictures like when they shared the pictures of the graduation that we had like mm -hmm. they it was like you know like someone was doing them from not from inside but when you're inside, everything looks big, right? But like, mm -hmm. when you look at it from the from the computer, it, it it looks like you're standing on the moon and looking at the Earth, you know, kind of a thing. Like mm -hmm. I'm doing right now. <laughs> but <laughs> but and it's engaging too because of how Nicholas designed it. Um, mm -hmm. What we do in there is we don't just get lectured to. We we do that learning with like video learning and and work on projects. But then when we come in there, he has a system that he's designed for quizzing. So we go we go through that and, and like a polling system. And then he and then in the middle of it, like we first he'll present the question. It's like it's like you know um, feedback looping. So he'll prevent, propose a question and we'll try to answer it. And then he'll have an animation that explains it. So you're not just seeing a PowerPoint. You're seeing, you know, objects move, and it's, he, and it's all animated. He just presses a button to kind of make it happen. So it's kind of cool. Um, I, I highly suggest check, checking it out. Even if you just want to take the first couple of um, weeks of a course, you can go in and, and try going into his, or even the, 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 what is it, the sessions that he does to try to get people lured in. Um, you can sit in his in his classroom setting and and see what it's like. Thanks. If it's not there already, would you mind posting a link in in Slack mm -hmm. to share with the rest of the community? Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yay. What is that noise? Uh, <laughs> clapping. 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 clapping for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like firecrackers <laughs> on my computer, like. Like the, you know, like there's Jacob, little... would you want to go next? Yeah, absolutely. I can go. Um, my name is Jacob Affelt. I am the digital developer lead at Fredrickson Learning. Um, I've been a designer developer for over a decade now, doing all kinds of stuff from working for large corporations to doing stuff in higher education. Uh, prior to that, I had a very different career. I was a master certified mechanic, um, so not at all the same career path. <laughs> um, but I had a passion for training and was able to pick up uh, some more technical programs 
pretty easily self-taught and and that's how i've uh extended my career so far so happy to be here really enjoy this group so far and, and can't wait to see where it goes Awesome. Really excited to hear your um, your share today. Thank you. And the cake is behind me, but uh, I will go quickly. I'm Leslie. I'm also <laughs> for the next few days um, will be at Fredrickson Learning, uh, uh, but my time there is almost over. So that's where Jacob and I know each other. I'm also an instructional designer, e-learning developer there, and. Um, Love the company. Asked Jacob if he wanted to share something that he created uh, for us as an internal um, tool, a 360 tour tool. So that's kind of one of the things I'll be sharing tonight. I'm excited for that. And I'm just, I love this group. <laughs> Again, also can't wait to see um, where it goes and, and what people share over the next coming months. So enough about me let's hand it over to lindsay i don't know how to get it over to you ah, thank you <laughs> hi lindsay oh i think i passed veronica sorry veronica i didn't oh, see veronica. you were kind of behind me you can go next <laughs> it's all good lindsay you're on <laughs> mute if oh you want me oh okay <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw a note from Lindsley in the Slack channel that um, she is in a noisy environment and um, ah. is going to stay on mute. Okay. So thank you, Lindsley. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, Veronica, it's all you. Hello, everyone. I'm Veronica. Um, I am a newer instructional designer, and so one of the things that I like to do is is just be a sponge and absorb a little bit of everything from all corners of L and D. So I am a jack of all trades. So hopefully one day mm -hmm. I'll be a master of one. <laughs> but don't um, do that. That's yeah, no fun. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> but yeah. Well, you know what they say: the power of one, right? You do them all. <laughs> Like a department of one, <laughs> but um, I'm glad of to be department here. Of one. Yeah. <laughs> and then Emily how do here. I pass the cake over? Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> Emily, Emily's the last one over there, unless Kristen, if you haven't gone yet. There you go, Emily. Hey, Jason. I just saw you. Sorry, I'm talking about the computer because. Police just showed up at my house because that's the kind oh, of week really? I'm having. Oh, really? what did you do, Emily? Oh. <laughs> There's a, this will be a fun one for you. There's a female arsonist setting all of the houses <laughs> in my neighborhood on fire. Oh, and my they wanted to if my Horrible. security system caught her on video because they want it for whatever the court case. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, so I uh, have been doing e-learning development for a hot minute now <laughs> and uh, <laughs> decided in the last couple of years that I really want to get into mixed reality development. And as of last Thursday, graduated from the first class for the MIT XR development cohort, which if you want to know about that, I'm happy to tell you about it, but I think I should have gone the direction um, I think it's Leslie who's taking the Unity or the uh, circuit stream ones. Somebody's taking I, the circuit yeah. stream ones. And I wish I had done that. Awesome. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I, excited I've done one with circuit work. stream. But uh, yeah, at this point, looking to get paid to do it <laughs> is where I'm at. Anyway, it's great <laughs> to see you all. <laughs> Yay! Mm -hmm. And I'll just do my intro really quick. Hi, everyone. Um, Kristen here, uh, also instructional designer by trade. I started off in uh, as an instructional designer in K-12 doing game-based learning. And about a year and a half ago, uh, started designing for VR. So yeah, also part of like uh, the community management for this, uh, this group. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But otherwise, so happy they're here so like proud to be part of such a community of practice and just a wonderful group of 
people who are interested in XR. So thanks for all being here. And Angela, nice to see you're in you're in VR. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I figured out right. the formula, so if you want me to post, I can in oh. Discord. <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. Thank you. All right, awesome. so, Leslie, <laughs> passing it over yeah. to you. <laughs> well, so I'm just going to immediately pass it over to Jacob. Um, uh, so just so everyone knows, the format's pretty casual. We're just going to give about, you know, some t uh, about 10 minutes to each Jacob and Veronica who wanted to share a little bit about their projects that they've created. Um, and then hopefully after that, we'll have time for some QA and general discussion about um, the projects and have, you know, sort of a, uh, a conversation about them. And also this is something that we hopefully in the future meetings is kind of a similar format. So if you have something that you're working on, that you would like to bring to the group and share out, even if it's not a completed project, but maybe something that you're working on that you want to share, maybe have a conversation around. And like you said, Kimberly, you know, sometimes it's hard to work on these things in isolation. So if it's something, you know, that maybe you want feedback from the group on, I, I think this would be a great space for that um, so that we can sort of just keep the conversation going and have it less be about, you know, webinars and lecturing and more about um, community building in this space. So hopefully over time, as we all start working on various projects, this would be a nice place to bring it to and, and sort of have some of those discussions. So, And without further ado, I will hand that over to Jacob. Thank you. Sorry to be trying to get this to fit here on the desktop version. It's slightly harder. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I was asked to create an internal sample um, or, or project for Fredrickson Learning um, because they're faced with a couple challenges and one project was fortunately able to resolve many of them. Um, so I, I designed and developed basically a 360 degree tour of the building where to park, where to access it, um, and a lot of the key features and or other businesses in it. Um, our building has a lot of ambiguous kind of doors and and, uh, and entrances. So it's, at least when I went there for my interview, there's 50 doors on the outside, and I had no idea how to get in. <laughs> um, so we wanted to be able to give kind of an immersive experience and good directions on how to get in, um, as well as how to navigate the building. So, so I use, for the tools I used, I used a 360 degree camera, um, as well as, sorry, with me here. This will kind of show it a little bit better. Um, I used a 360 degree camera to get all of my shots of everything. And then I used uh, Figma, which is more of a UX prototyping tool to kind of lay out the flow of how I, ever, how I wanted everything to go. Um, followed by Photoshop to actually edit the images. Um, and then finally, I put it in Storyline to actually build a course to navigate through. Um, so the, the use cases we had for this were, were one of three. Um, or three different ones, rather. The, the first one was just the general, um, we have clients or customers or, or even employees that haven't been to the building yet because we're living in a, in a pandemic world and want to be able to show them how to get here, how to get in, and where to navigate to once you get in. Um, so that was the first use case. The second one was for um, the longer time employees that haven't been in or haven't seen all the amenities that the building has to offer. Um, so we uh, wanted to showcase that, you know, we have a brewery there. We have a lot of different options that you can visit while you're, while you're at work. Um, and then the third one that they just had me do was a kind of reduced one to send out on meeting invites. Um, just as a mailer that can be sent out uh, with all of our new clients coming in. 
Um, so it's a really fun tool. You click to navigate throughout, um, and there's markers on everything that you want to take a look at. Um, and then there's no, not like your typical e-learning, there's not an end that you get to and it's like you're complete with the learning. It's completely free navigation. Everywhere in the building you can go, you can come back from um, and continue your journey. I did find out that um, working with 360 degree images and this type of setting in Articulate has different challenges in terms of if you're trying to navigate back and forth between places. Um, and it definitely has some limitations as well. But overall, our internal our, our internal team really loved the the end product of it. Um, are there any questions I can answer about putting it together, tools, um, thought process behind it, anything like that? I can jump in while people, if they are thinking of, of uh, questions, that, that there was a real need for this because that building is called the Prior Works Building. This used to be a uh, um, like an industrial complex that, and it's in, you know, the, essentially the industrial side of St. Paul now that's being um, changed into office space, but you really can't, you, if someone didn't send this to you before this, um, HR would generally, our HR representative would have to meet somebody outside the building to escort them in because there was no way they'd be able to find their way um, on their own. So, this is trying to sort of alleviate some of that. But the other thing I noticed that I really liked about this, Jacob, that you made as a design element, because I've tried playing around in Storyline 360 as well, is how you use those square boxes um, to indicate, like, this is, this is a point of travel. Because I got hung up on, like, the icons, I get the icons, but I was using them as information like you have here, but I also tried to use them as a point of, like a teleportation point. And it was just mm -hmm. very clunky and not intuitive at all. So I like this solution that you came up with of highlighting the doors and the, the places that are actual teleportation locations. So I just wanted to call that out as a very nice solution to that problem that I would not have come up with on my own, I don't think. <laughs> Yeah, I absolutely had the same experience the first time around, actually. Um, I tried using icons or the, the, the markers as navigation, and, like, this just doesn't, this doesn't feel right. Um, so you can add the same, like, uh, call-out effect to hotspots in Articulate, and that's what I used instead because I was like, it just it has to be different somehow for people to understand where they have to go. I'm curious, any other um, questions or anything that I can answer? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious uh, for, for the users that you had using this uh, 360 tour, how, how did they receive it? Did they have any feedback? Um, so far, it's been all internal people. We're going to be sharing it with clients here shortly that, that may have interest in coming into the building, obviously still living in a in a pandemic world that's few and far between. Um, but of all the people I've shared it with so far, they think that it's a really cool tool. And uh, you know, a lot of people didn't even have an understanding of what was offered in our building. And I got to know that large, just ambiguous building very well in the process of making this. Um, and I can understand why it would be intimidating. There's a lot of crazy hallways and a lot of weird pathways to get to all the things you want and now they can just explore and know where they want to go without having to actually go wander very cool which 360 camera do you use it's called the rico theta rico like r-i-c-o-h r-i-c-o-h and t-h-e-t-a cool. Uh, I found it really simple to use. Um, it's all based out of an app. So you just pair it with your phone, and then your app controls everything that you do. So um, you don't have to worry about taking pictures of yourself. You can walk away and take the picture with your phone. 
um, so that you don't have to worry about trying to edit specific things out. Nice. And you said you used Thank Photoshop you. and Storyline. What were your other programs you used? I used Figma just to kind of lay out how I wanted to do it because there's probably, oh, I don't know, in total 75, 360 images in, in the project itself. Um, oh, wow. So I wanted to lay those out without going into Storyline because anyone who has developed in Storyline knows that as the file gets very large, it gets very, very clunky and slow. Um, so I wanted to lay it out first before I put it in there so I didn't have to deal with just working with something that was terribly slow. Um, Photoshop was mainly used to edit out. Uh, when you're working with the 360 camera, the only part of the camera that gets caught in the picture is whatever you're using for a stand, um, and specifically the feet of the stand. Um, so making it into a spherical image and then taking out basically the stand is what I needed for Photoshop. Or uh, in one of the pictures I had added a person out. Um, but other than that, it uh, that's all I needed Photoshop for. It's a really cool project. And so I'm going to share a, a link to this in, in the Slack channel as well um, so that if if you want afterwards, you can take a look at the full project and explore and wander around. And if any other questions come up, please just let me know. I have a, a quick question. Yeah. Um, I, I know you, you mentioned you made this in, in Storyline, and I think, you know, a lot of us are very familiar with designing in 2D on Storyline. I'm curious mm -hmm. what your experience was uh, designing, like, spatially in 3D. So there are limitations um, that I am not a fan of. So I, everyone that's worked in 2D and Storyline understands there's a lot of triggers and variables, and um, you're only really limited by your imagination of what you can make things do. Um, the 360 element of that is not there yet. You're very limited with what, what triggers you can do and what, what actions you can make happen within a 360 image but how i found my way around that was you can so your 360 image is your your kind of base layer if you think about that and then when you're not editing within the 360 image itself you can still do a lot of things on top of it and it layers in uh pretty seamlessly with with the actual 360 image so an example of this would be, let's see here, on this first one here. What's up? Maybe. Just going to give a shout out uh, from Zoe G on Zoom. She says, agreed, very cool project. Can't come off mute, but just wanted to chime in. So, um, Oh, thank you. Is. Yeah, thanks, Zoe. And definitely, Jacob, very, very cool. Um, it's, it's, I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of concept with um, Storylines 360 images and, and not a lot of fully fleshed out projects. So it was really, it's interesting to, to hear how you managed it with Figma. And um, it, yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah. For some reason, the first GIF isn't loading for me. But an example of this, uh, of the layering that I was talking about, uh, would be at the very beginning, I have instructions of just how to navigate the course. Um, and even adding something as simple oh, as, like, shapes and instructions that you can dismiss, uh, uh, like, to get to go away, away or change states, you can't do that within a 360 image. But you can layer it on top outside of the image and use your triggers and variables to tell it to go away when you hit the dismiss button. Um, and it functions within the image, even when that image loads. Um, so working within that space, I found that to be really unique and helpful as well. Awesome. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Jacob. I did want to make sure we get enough time for Veronica. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's... Um... 
turn it over. Are you, are you still with us here, Veronica? You're just like behind my shoulder in virtual reality. So like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like lurking over in here. The back. Like, hey guys, yeah. I'm in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they stand. Like, I guess over here. <laughs> okay, so let me see if I can load my thing. Um, so you could see it. I'll make it bigger. if you need help moving it we can probably oh, there, you go. there you go okay all right so this is a, a use case that i have for augmented reality you can scan the qr code with your phone um and let me see here's a here's one it's uploading but there's a, a gift that leslie made <laughs> that shows how to scan it um, but if you go ahead and scan it like a regular QR code, it'll take you to a web browser that is for um, Zapper. It's an app called Zapper. And it'll, it'll let you see the widget in action. And this is a, a, a basically a micro learning campaign where AR is a component of it. And so the business need behind it is that doctors were trying to increase attendance for the annual cancer screening. And they were showing in their statistics that women of color were most at risk for the diagnosis within the later stages of breast cancer. And so it was mainly geared towards being able to keep information um, out there to where it's reaching all parties. And so in the widget, there's different things that you can see on there. Um, one aspect of it is being able to um, incorporate like a YouTube video for doing self exams. Um, it also has another YouTube video of what to watch out for, like warning signs of cancer. Um, there's another link in there that shows the information in other languages. So making sure that language wouldn't be something that's hindering an audience from being able to receive that education. And then it also has links to a map that can set up um, screening locations. So wherever they are across the U.S., they'll be able to find the nearest screening location that offers um, the breast cancer screening so that they can take advantage of that. Um, there is also a breast cancer screening course in there. Um, it's made in seven taps, so that was a component of it. Um, but these are all free resources. So seven taps is a part of it. Um, Zap, Zapper is the name of the program that you can build the augmented reality experience in. Um, all of the images are from like Pexels and Pixabay. Um, and then of course the, the YouTube links. So all of this is free resources. This was just um, something to show a dynamic of how we can create that learning experience for people to reach different audiences. Because you can put this on a flyer, you can put this you know, on a, a note card, you can send it out to different things. So in a doctor setting for medical care, they can disperse it different ways. Very cool. And it didn't take very long either. Um, I know a lot of this can be intimidating to see everything, um, but it took me maybe about four to six hours. Um, and the majority of it was mainly finding the right resources, like the research part of it, of looking through credible resources, trying to make sure that it's going to be set up to where it creates a certain effect on it. Um, but after that, it kind of builds itself. So Zephyr is definitely a very friendly tool to use um, when you're getting started with augmented reality. Um, so I'll, I'll add some what I know about this tool. So this is the widget, right? The, in Zephyr, the widget mm -hmm. tool. So yeah, this, this is, is the pretty. widget. So this little wheel with the rotating icons, these are linking out to the different um, resources that Veronica was talking about. And, and it's literally, this widget already exists in Zapper as a template, and so all you really have to do is um, provide the links to the different resources, or if you're putting in, like, images, you just have to upload those assets in the Zapper um, tool. So, yeah, that's why this is, like, a great, a great quick way to organize things and push out information to people um, in this kind of way. So that's why I... I just want to point that out that this looks complex, but it's actually it's it's a uh, it's already sort of pre-built, and you're just loading in the content. So very cool. 
And yeah, did you, and I... did you want to share a little bit about um, how your sister was using that? Because I thought that was interesting as well. Yes. Um, here, what I'm sharing is just what Zapper uh, looks like on the back end. So you can see everything's linked in there, and then it has the side options. So just if somebody wants a preview of what oh, that program here, would look like. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in oh, the random okay. space by me. <laughs> I'm in the woods okay. over here. <laughs> Thank you. That way you can see, like, an insight of what that program looks like. And, and it is just like she's saying. It comes with a template. You upload something on the side and choose your option of what you want. Um, the uh, character that we have in the middle, that's going to be the center focus of the widget. And you can add sound. You can add different things to it. Um, so it is, it is pretty user friendly. But um, I did have this more as like a proposed business case use that we were going to be able to set up and say, you know, this is what doctors can do to create that engagement. Um, and then it was Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so that was the topic um, that I had picked. But when it comes to actually using it, I did show my sister how to make a widget. Um, and she is a nurse in healthcare. She works for under oncology, so she works on the adult side and also um, uh, pediatrics as well. And so one of the things that she used a widget for was being able to um, create monthly newsletters. And in the monthly newsletter, she's communicating different things. Um, so what I'm going to share here, waiting for it to upload, um, is what that, what exactly that looks like. So what's unique about it is the widget is going to change month to month. Um, so it's still going to have that same circle dynamic. I didn't want to provide the code on this one only because it has um, sensitive information for the hospital unit. Um, but in the widget, you're going to see different resources. Yeah. So one of them is like the top picture of the guy in the hat. Like <laughs> they're sending in selfies of them, you know, doing different things. And so that's already building employee engagement on their behalf. Um, they had some things where they were doing like um, dad jokes and being able to share humor across this platform. They also had somebody make that um, collage that's there and they wanted to show some employee recognition for the highlights for January. They also have a YouTube video that's a motivational YouTube video for them having to deal with healthcare and cancer um, research. And then they also have upcoming events, which one is Saving Lives. So in March, they're going to start to have one called St. Baldrick's, and that's where they have people shave their heads in the spirit of being able to donate the hair and being able to raise money for, for cancer research. So this is, this is like a real business case that is in effect. Um, and it's serving as a communication channel for current events across patient care and protocols for the hospital. And it's really helpful because, you know, we're in the pandemic and healthcare workers are on the front line. So it really does make a difference to them because it may start to be and it's an upper and a morale booster for them. How are you delivering the, the zap code or the QR code for this newsletter? How is she delivering it to people? So what she does is she sends out an email to the um, parties like involved at the hospital. And so in the email, it's going to have the actual zap code because Zapper does have its own unique lightning bolt um, zap code design. So she mm -hmm. shares that one. And then she also has the QR code as well. Um, so because uh, Zapper has its own design, you have to use the app that's specific for it. But if you don't have it, then you can use the QR code and it pulls it up in the web browser. So she'll share, like, that icon in an email, sends it out and disperses it, and then they're all scanning it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, and her favorite color is yellow. So when she has, like, a yellow oh, lightning bolt, sorry. like, it doesn't print that well. <laughs> so that's, like, she gave me a little, because I think they also printed them, too, and put them around the, the stations at work. Um, but she gave me, like, a little a little uh, icon too. So I have it posted on my desk. So I just thought that was really cool, like an actual use of how they can. Very cool. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, we have a few more minutes. So if, I guess we can open it up again to if we have any other questions um, for Veronica. Thank you both for sharing. Those were great. Zapper. Uh oh. Absolutely.
Thank you. I love the altruistic um, nature of these presentations too. Like it's all about helping people. Like even um, Jacob was helping people navigate the, the building. You know, it's, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Angela, was that you talking? Yeah, was I not? I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing hear? a lot of static. It's, it's, it oh. sounds like your yeah. like microphone is not connection working. Your connection is voice. The mermaid voice. <laughs> I was experiencing that, and it was a bandwidth issue with other people in my house. Oh, <laughs> mm. oh I have a teenager, so... <laughs> they might be using it, yeah. <laughs> well, um, if we don't have a lot of questions, then we can also um, hand it over to Kristen to just review our um, time challenge, which is coming up. The deadline is coming. We have about one more month left <laughs> on that. Yes. About one more month left. Um, for those of you who haven't heard about our design challenge, we're hosting a quarterly design challenge. So you got some time to still submit a um, like a design for our design challenge. The next uh, the due date isn't until April first, so you do have some time left. Our topic of this quarter's design challenge is. What does effective microlearning look like in XR? Uh, we have, have some specifications for the submission, which include uh, learning objectives, rationale uh, for the design challenge, um, for your design decisions, uh, just sort of an explanation of any challenges you faced. Well, let me grab that back. <laughs> Sorry, and I think that was me. <laughs> no, that's okay. And any details or visuals that you think are necessary to communicate your proposed learning experience. Uh, we have various reward award categories. So, you know, for those of you who really are excited to submit a design document, there's a category for that. Uh, for those of you who are really into prototyping, there's a category for that. Also, some web-based tools and some um, game engine tools. So, feel free to submit to any category uh, that fits your your liking. Um, there is a particular channel in which we'll ask you to submit your design uh, challenge submission, um, and that just helps it, it. It's just easier for us to be able to organize it and for the community to be able to see it all in one place. Uh, for those of you who need a little bit more structure or guidance around this larger topic of designing microlearning in XR, we have added um, sort of some additional guidance for um, really for those who want a little bit more guardrails. I know I personally work a little bit better with um, more defined structure around uh, learning solutions. So we have come up with this sort of brief, uh, which is the experience is about 10 minutes long, the audience is a novice barista, and the brief is that a, a coffee house called Grindhouse wants to train their new baristas in using XR, and it's important that each Grindhouse barista can accurately and consistently pull a perfect shot of espresso. Um, and so you can use this or, you know, it doesn't need to be about around espresso, but we really wanted to provide sort of an exemplar of the type of scope for this type of design challenge. Um, feel free to use it as inspiration. You don't need to design exactly to this. Again, it could be um, just a, for the broader category of designing microlearning for XR, um, but if you wanted some additional guidance, uh, the, this page two of the brief uh, could, could help some of your brainstorms. Any questions? And, oh sorry, a copy of this can also be found in the Design Challenge uh, Slack channel. 
All right. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to holler in, in the Slack. We'll, we'll be there. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen. I know I, I definitely need to get started and um, I like solving problems. So it's, it's nice to have a, a starting point. So thank you for putting that together for us. Absolutely. I'm super excited to see everyone's submission. I know that I still need to, I still need to get started on my, on my design. Mm -hmm. I haven't started yet. Um, oh, but also this doesn't have to be an individual submission. We could work in teams to also submit your design. Ooh, that's fun. Right. All right. Well, I think that was up. For, uh, that was it for for my updates. Any other updates or anything from the team? Great. Well, thank you, everyone. And um, I I have to jump, but I hope everyone has a wonderful night and and week ahead. Thanks for setting this up. This was great. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, nice everyone. to meet you. Thanks, everyone. Great session. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you, Jacob Bye, and Veronica. everyone. Thank you, yeah, Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.